Uh, yeah, we're there. Hey, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. It's Dr. D, a global educator and school and community relations specialist. So I am super duper excited on tonight for another episode of Unlimited Edition Live. I have an amazing guest with me tonight. It is Dr. Robin Coltrane. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. <laughs> she is a phenomenal woman and also representing African American history month she's an african-american female and she's a principal she's the principal here at w.a perry middle school in, woo, in richland school <laughs> district one a phenomenal school district and guess what guys she won the 2020 sc middle level principal of the year for the state of south carolina that is an amazing and amazing awesome achievement man that it's definitely Thank not you. something that's easy we know that so we're going to talk a little bit tonight about like how do we get to that place like so um you're the middle level school principal of the year congratulations thank you again. thank you so much thank super you. excited like how does it feel like and, and then tell us like what does that mean because people see you know the accolades and the awards yeah. but a lot of times they don't know exactly what that means so how do you feel and then tell us what that means um it's still surreal um it's an awesome feeling to be able to represent w.a perry middle school for <laughs> one yes <laughs> to represent richland one i've spent the last 18 years of my life in richland one okay so i'm pretty much vetted and in so it feels good to represent Richland One. Okay. And then it's still sinking in that it's for the state of South Carolina. Man. And there's so many great administrators out there, like yeah. lots of my friends, ones I've met. So to be able to represent the state knowing we have that caliber of leadership throughout the state, it really, it really, it feels good. I'm still letting it all sink in Man. because it's the magnitude of it is just, it's really heavy. I can imagine, um, and, I, and I like the fact that you said the magnitude yeah. is really heavy because that's one thing I think oftentimes when we are um, given awards, given accolades, I don't think we realize the the assignment yeah. that goes along yeah. with that. It's like not just a title, yeah. it's actually an assignment that goes along with it. You said you not only represent yourself, but you literally represent administrators, yes. for the, especially middle level, middle for level. the entire state. State of South Carolina. Man, so like, tell me, like, I know you're like still like letting it sink in, but what does that mean, like, you know, for the state and, and for middle level administrators? So for this next year, I have the opportunity to, to travel and to meet different administrators and have conversations around middle level education, okay. have conversations around education in general. Okay. Um, we kick off at the end of the month at the South Carolina Middle Level Conference. Okay. Have the opportunity to present there. We'll go to the State House in March, actually. Have some dialogue about education. Mm. Have some wonderful opportunities coming up where I'm speaking with other expiring administrators, okay. expiring teachers. So lots of opportunity to get that voice out there about middle level education and about education. And I have this platform, this this kind of slogan that I developed doing that process that says uh, my students are more than a score. Mm, that's so good. My students are more than a score. That's so, so good. You know, really taking that into consideration is that we have to look at kids as more than test scores. That's so good. They matter. When we look into Man. their places, we can't see a number always. Man. Account testing and assessment is important. Absolutely. But it can't be to the point that we no longer see kids for who they really are. That's so good. So, that is, platform. listen, I, I think it's My an platform. excellent platform, um, a amazing platform. Um, hey, Auntie Monty's checking in <laughs> saying hello. I see my cousin, um, Dr. Walters out there as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, man, someone says uh, a powerful statement, Evangelist Cook, a powerful statement. I think that's amazing yes. because, you know, our system really went to this sort of place where we were looking at children as just numbers test yes. scores we're looking at teacher performances by student yes. test scores and like you said data is important it, it is. is very very it's important it. it's a place for it it's how we build you know programs yeah. it's how we build curriculum yes. based on that data it's so important but our children need to be valued and yes. seen as human beings exactly. and individuals so i applaud you, Thank you. Thank for you. Re remaining authentic yes to that that piece of your heart that goes along with the work that you do it in is. education. And I tell someone that, you know, being an administrator, just being in education is head work 
but it's hard work Man. too. And so sometimes, uh, one of my best mentors, she told me um, right before I got this posi- position, she said, I don't ever want you to stop what you do with your heart. Mm. She said, um, while some people may see it as a deficit, mm-hmm. she said, it's what's going to guide you in the work that you do. And so just remember, having a heart for kids, mm-hmm. having a heart for people, mm-hmm. um, that matters to me. It, it really matters. And we work together at Olympia. So Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we've had that experience, and you, you, you know, Absolutely. I haven't changed much. And and, and and that's and actually it's actually our uh, guys that are everybody that's watching it's actually what pretty much I believe put her in the position to uh, win this award. Um, we were talking offline a few minutes ago, and literally she shared that in her interview she laid it all on the line, yeah. and she shared from her heart about what her school and described what her school really looks like in a nutshell. Yeah. And she laid it all out, yeah. and here she is, and she Thank sits you. and stands <laughs> as the. Thank you. 2020 middle level SC middle level principal of the year because she put it all out there and I I keep telling people I told people at the beginning of the year when when I started my lives that this year that for me and I believe it's not just for me I think it's for a lot of people but authenticity was the key and when we're authentic the awards the recognition all of that will come naturally when we're authentic it doesn't matter what boardrooms we're in it doesn't matter what award rooms when we're authentic and we leave it on the table then people can feel that they can they can and i think when you're doing work that you that you know that you are called to do Mm -hmm. and i know that with we're not supposed to miss church and state and I don't know where one ends and one begins. Mm, you know, so, so good. Um, my faith, my faith. I know that this is what I was called to do. I know for this time in my life, this is where I'm supposed to be, doing what I'm supposed to do. And there have been a lot of times when I've been conflicted by, you know, but God, you you said do this now. Yeah. You sure? <laughs> <laughs> you sure you meant Robin Coltrane? <laughs> I've said that from time to time. But I know that he called me, and I know this is what he wants me to do. And whenever I stayed on that path, even when you can hear that other stuff in your ear, right? when I stayed on the path that he chose for me and do this, Robin, and do it Mm -hmm. as I say do it, um, it's benefited me. It's benefited me even when the ridicule comes or the negativity comes. If I just stay true to what he says, um, it's been powerful. I love that. It, you, I love the way it's you're just powerful. rolling with it. Um, Chanel says, true story. <laughs> um, absolutely true story, <laughs> Chanel. Um, and I love that you said, uh, you know, your faith. That's important. It's important to me because I'm a believer. And there are a lot of people who are watching who are believers. Yeah. And I know, like, we've gone through just several litigations about church and state yeah. mix. But um, you have to be authentic to that core. Yeah. And if your mm-hmm. core is, is it rests in Christ, then that's just what it is. it is. And it's the things that that are able to help manifest yeah. what you believe you're called to do. And I like that you said, you know, when you hear, because we're going to all hear. Yeah. We're going to hear doubt. Yeah. We're going to hear confusion. We're going to hear frustrations. And as we're moving towards what we're called to do. But the thing is, you got to stand. Yeah. You have to stand. And that's what she's saying. That's what she did. She st- yeah. stood on yeah. what she believed in her heart. And again, here we have it. Thank you. As the Thank SC you. Middle Level Principal of the Year, which Thank I think is so an much. amazing, Thank you. Thank amazing you. award. So I want to move on to, you know, the next question. Like, you've uh, been an assistant principal. You've now a principal. Oh, and let me say this that I just <laughs> found out. <laughs> Just found out tonight while while speaking with Dr. Coltrane. Someone says, love Dr. Coltrane, Lancaster. <laughs> and so, oh yeah, mention it. This is her first year as a middle first school principalship. first principalship mm-hmm. ever. 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 And she <laughs> wins the SC State Middle Level Principal of the Year. So that goes to show you, you know, and, and not to discount because I'm pretty sure that her experiences as an admin, uh, assistant admin administrator, or you, even as an educator or consultant, yes. I'm certain all of those moments set her up for this moment. Yes. But it also goes to show you, too, that it doesn't always matter about the experience in years yeah. as far as in that specific role. Yeah. But what matters is when you're authentic to yeah. who you are, and you carry that message well, then that platform will set up. Oh, your baby says, so proud of my mommy. <laughs> We're proud of her too, Samari. <laughs> so wanted to share that, like, your first principal, yeah. first principalship, that is major. And, and you I, take I home would, your award. Talk about I, that. I would say um, 
that I have a dynamic team here at Perry. Um, we have learned each other. They know my expectations and I know them. And they've worked hard. Mm. And we, I always tell people when we interview, you know, be true to who we are. Mm -hmm. We don't want to scare people away, but we want to tell them who we are, mm -hmm. the type of children that we serve. And that here, it requires a different level of grind. Mm. It, it requires just a different level of grind. And that, you know, from sun up to sundown, we are giving our kids our all. Um, from our community partners to our stakeholders, everyone. You got to be fully invested and committed to this work. So I knew when I took on this job, my daughter and I sat down. Okay. Because when I got my first AP job, I didn't do this. Okay. And she knows if I decide that I'm going to do something and I decide to put my name on mm -hmm. it, I'm giving you all of me. Absolutely. You, got every, you got every bit of me. <laughs> I am fully committed yes. and I'm fully vested. Always have been that way. Yeah. So I asked her, can you handle what mommy is about to do? Even though you're going off to college and it's real key. you still need your mother. Yeah. Can you handle it? And she said, mommy, this is what God has called you to do. And she said, yeah. I know you're going to do it. So we're, we're going to work through the pieces of it. And so it's those these past four years have been like a grinding, mm. like a rubber meets the road, like my team, like they... They've just been amazing in terms of what it is we needed to do. So I want to give kudos and a shout out ooh, ooh, ooh. to my team at W.A. Perry because while this award has my name on it, it's for them. It's truly an award for W.A. Perry Middle School and the work that we do here. I love it. I love that. Mm -hmm. and, and it's one of the reasons why I love Robin because she's always a team player. Thank you. Has always been a team player. And as she stated, it has her name on it. But, of course, we know with any school, it takes a team. Yeah. So, shout out to W.A. Perry. You guys rock. Yes. <laughs> and you have an amazing leader, you know. <laughs> you. So, super excited about that. Um, I'm going to skip around a little bit because there was something you said that okay. shifts us in, into what I want to talk about next. So, um, as a black female educator, you know, yeah. and, and you're, you're, in a, you're a community leader. You know, because uh, when we are principals, we take on that role yeah. because you're leading children, you're yes. leading families, you're leading yes. teachers. It's a whole community yeah. um, that's, you know, you're leading. And so what are some of your concerns regarding the black community in education? This is Black History Month. So gotcha. just to kind of remind you guys that the focus is on African-Americans, hence why I have an African-American principal. And we're talking through like what are some of your concerns regarding education and how has W.A. Perry sort of, um, you know, gauged those concerns? Okay. So. While children are more than a test score, um, assessment happens. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at those numbers, there still seems to be a pretty wide gap mm -hmm. between our African-American children mm -hmm. and their Caucasian counterparts. Mm -hmm. um, and we have to do something about that Absolutely. gap and closing that gap. And so here at W.A. Perry, we, we take our kids, whatever they come in with, and we try to move them from where they are. Okay. Many of our kids are not reading by third grade level. Okay. By, by third grade. And so when we get them, we try to work on, we have an enrichment block. Okay. We push literacy a lot here. Okay. We do a lot of strategies. Um, we do a lot of culturally relevant um, books and literature. Awesome. Because for me, it was very important, and for my team, for kids to be able to see themselves in books. Absolutely. Um, to be able to aspire to uh, things that they have not seen before. Absolutely. So that's why we give them lots of experiences. Good. Um, people are always saying, you all are traveling everywhere. You can't be what you can't see. Oh, that's so good. That is so good. You can't so be good. what you can't see. Man. I can tell you all day long, but until you've had the opportunity to see it uh -huh. and to experience yeah. it, so just having teachers who look like them or having teachers from a diverse background. I want my kids to be able to love their culture and experience their culture, but also appreciate other cultures. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so here we have a diverse uh, staff. Good. We have teachers from Jamaica. We have teachers from the Philippines. We have teachers from India. And so I think we have a nice community of teachers being able to expose our kids to a wide range of experiences. Um, I was meeting with my mentor the other day, and he told me, he let me whine and whimper for a little bit, <laughs> and then he said, are you done? All right, that's what they do. And um, <laughs> he said to me, can you, I was whining about something, and he said, can you control that? Mm. And I said, no, I can't. 
He said, then don't give it so much of your focus. That's so good. So I would love to have more involvement um, from my parents. Mm -hmm. Um, I would love, we have a nice group of community stakeholders who are involved. But until I have... One, until I have somebody touching every one of my kids, I'm probably not going to stop. Right. <laughs> until I have people running through the door where all of my kids are touched by somebody. That's good. You know, That's so really good. would like that more community involvement. Um, so those are some of that, that gap, closing in that gap, um, making sure that um, in terms of resources, I feel like here at W.A. Perry, we get a lot of we're, we're resource rich. Okay, good. I don't feel like we're lacking in there, but that's not the case for everyone. Yeah. So as the middle level principal of the year, just making sure that I'm advocating that those resources are equitable in all districts. That's really and good. And making sure, really not necessarily good. equal, but equitable. equitable, because everyone doesn't need the same thing. Correct. That's not, that's not equity. Correct. You know, making sure that we have what we need to be successful. So that's, that's some of the things that I'm concerned about. But just closing... Closing that gap. Closing that gap. And I think that's that's really spot on. Yeah. Especially here in South Carolina. It's especially here in the South. It, it's 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 you know, we you've been teaching for quite some yeah. time. Yeah. Um yeah. I have as well. Yeah. And we've known that our state overall has had challenges, you know, it, statistically, yeah. uh, it, as relates to the nation. Yeah. And um, of course, like you said, I love what your mentor says. If it's something we can't do anything about, we're not going to give our energy to it. But what yeah. we can do yeah. something about is focus on South Carolina yeah. and focus on the babies that we have in front of us. And because I've had that special ed, my background previously was special ed. Okay. So 14, 15 years of my life has been special ed. Mm-hmm. So I think that helps me in the work that I do in terms of intervention, um, Looking at all children, mm-hmm. you know, seeing all kids and being inclusive of them all. Right. I think that has helped me greatly um, here at W.A. Perry um, to fight some of the woes that we have. Because for me, all kids, uh-huh. all kids are important. Absolutely. You know, I want my low achievers as well as my high achievers. Absolutely. I want everyone Everybody. to be served, you know, um, the way they should be served. Absolutely. You know, and, and stretch, stretch for them and bring these children up. So. Absolutely. I love you, that you use the term as a as a leader. Use the term serve, and I, because that's yeah, something I it's is in my vocabulary it often. Is. Because it whether is. you're a teacher, uh, principal, uh, bus driver, uh, library, you we are serving. We are. You know, and I know we get paid. You know, <laughs> and, and and I know that there's so much going on but, but uh, behind teacher pay, and and, and yeah. that's a that's a different fight. Yeah. Um. So for a different day. <laughs> um, it's just, uh, it is. Uh, yeah. We can be here all day. Right. Long. For for this particular discussion, um, I, I just want to point out these that word serve. Yeah. Is that you are serving, and it, it goes back to what you said earlier of yeah. feeling like it's a calling, yeah. um, and and that's something that I felt yeah. when I, when I took on this, um, or felt like I was led into this field. Um, it was it became a calling, like yes. oh, this is not a job; these are children, these are lives, lives at stake. Lives. You know that could go left or right depending yeah. on your interaction with them. So I'm I'm glad you use that yeah. term, serve. It's it's very important to to have that concept. And if, and if we're not, and for me. <laughs> My daughter, you know, she'll laugh. Ma, you get married? Girl, I don't know. But I knew, I've known for a long time that my life mm-hmm. was was about service. Mm-hmm. Like I've known, like people know what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to serve. Yeah. Um, and so I told somebody a long time ago that this work for me is a ministry of mm-hmm. sorts. You know, it's what drives me. It's, it what, it's what keeps me up at nighttime. Um. It doesn't feel like work because this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be serving at this point in time in this community with my children. Absolutely. You know, so that's what drives me. And when you're doing that, um, I told somebody, if you do the work and you work hard, the accolades will come. Man. You won't, you won't have to worry Man. about that. Do the work. <laughs> I have this thing over there that every day these affirmations on my wall. And it just says, show up. And do the work. That's it. 
That is so key. Like, I think a lot of time, especially in our culture, and I believe it comes from, you know, just the deficit of our background being in America, almost feeling like we have to scratch and claw for everything. Yeah. And I think it's it becomes generational, you know. It, and, and I tr- personally yeah. believe that until that cycle is interrupted and something else is placed in there, yeah. because, you know, our life is a cycle. It so is. nothing breaks. It you got to interrupt it. Thank God for my sister, Dr. Eliza Harney, for telling me that. Like, <laughs> she gave me that uh, that nugget that you, you can't break it. The life is cyclical. Cyclical. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Get the word out. Yes. And you cannot break the cycle, but you can interrupt it yes. with something else. Yeah. So we have to, as African Americans, see that this work is, yeah. it, it's when you do the work, the the accolades and the accomplishments those things will show up like they they won't you don't have to chase them yeah they will chase, they will chase you. you yeah they, they will chase, chase you down so super excited that you Thank shared you. that nugget and you said something that actually points us into you know, my next question and and that is have you always seen yourself as a principal is that something you really <laughs> went to school for is that what you were focused on tell us a little bit about that journey no <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be a lawyer. Forever and a day. My uh, my undergrad degree is in political science. Wow. <laughs> in political science from South Carolina State. Go Bulldogs. Go Bulldogs. And so I applied to law school and I didn't get in. I was like, okay, should apply. I should have applied again. And I started becoming interested in special ed some kind of way. So this is a funny story. I wanted to go to Howard for undergrad. And everyone in my family had gone to South Carolina State. Wow. So it was kind of like this tradition. You have to go. So they wouldn't let me go to Howard. Wow. <laughs> so then when I graduated, I ended up, you know, going to Howard and majoring in special ed and kind of got into education that way. Okay. Came back to South Carolina, um, taught special ed for a while, was a special ed consultant for a while, and then went into administration okay. as an AP and then now as principal. Wow. So, so man, it, it goes to show you that, yeah, you know, our journeys yeah. are not our own. Yeah. <laughs> we are directed yeah. in, in ways yeah. that, you know, we don't understand how sometimes we end up in a place. So but not a lawyer, uh, but still advocating. That's what I was getting ready to say. I was going to it. <laughs> oh, yeah, you yeah. may not have that JD, <laughs> but you have a PhD. <laughs> yeah, so advocate for kids. Yeah. Right, you know, and so. you're, you're advocating. I mean, yeah. And, and, and it's important because you're, that passion yeah. is still there yeah. because yes. I know that you you will rock for these children from sun up to sundown. Yeah, I will. So it's, I, you're, I love you're, them. You're, I love them. I, I, and and I honestly, the role now as the SC Middle Level educa- uh, Administrator of the Year, you're literally, that's what you're doing. Yeah. You're now out advocating, literally, legally, yeah. out here advocating for children and administrators for the entire yeah. state. Yeah. So that's that's super amazing. Super amazing. So let's talk about, I, I shared this that I was going to ask this. So okay. I didn't want to, because I remember <laughs> Robin and I, we used to work together. And so we, you know, when you're working, you start to talk to people, yeah. you learn about their histories. And I think this is important. It's important for parents watching. It's important for educators watching, administrators, and just our community stakeholders okay. to just understand like processes and what that looks like. So if you can kind of discuss with us, you know, your challenges and your journey as a student okay. um, coming through school in because you're from Lake City, I'm right? From Lake City, go Panthers. <laughs> Lake City, South Carolina. And the only thing I know is in, is near Myrtle Beach. That's so the only thing. So I got it. So, like, tell us. Um, you know, you shared that story when we worked together. So, if you can tell our audience a little bit about your background, just a little bit. So, um, I did. I'm gonna speak from from the angle because now it's not popular to be smart. Mm. You know, kids don't want to be smart. Mm. I did pretty well in in school. Um, it was my thing. So I grew up, and my family still does it from this, to this day. Mm-hmm. My nickname was Nerd for my wow. family. Um, I did well. Um, back during that time, we were close. I love my elementary experience. I love my middle school experience. Love my high school experience. We were a close-knit group of people. Mm, that's good. Uh, my mother gave birth to me at 16, so wow. she was a young parent. Gotcha. So I was raised by her and my grandparents. Okay. Um, the middle school was right across the street from my house. Literally, you walk out the door, across the street, you're at the middle I school. I understand it. And so, <laughs> wasn't much I could do. And when I did get in trouble, they called right, right across the street. Right. <laughs> you know, but I had a really good group of administrators and people who cared, mm. who went that extra mile. When you did something wrong, you knew you were going to get it from them. You mm-hmm. were going to get it from your parents. Absolutely. And so 
having that close knit, it's kind of like it's it's shaped me mm -hmm. for what I want the experience for my children to be mm -hmm. here at the school. Um, but it wasn't always popular to be smart, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so my my experience in the middle school was good. Okay, got to college. I mean, high school was good as as good as well. Got to college. You know, you want to fall in love. Absolutely. You know, you know how that goes. Um, we all know how that goes. But college was a little different for me. Okay. Because I, that close-knit family, mm -hmm. I'm learning people all over again for the first time. Yeah. And so you start to get into this competitive cycle mm -hmm. where people are competing against each other. Right. You know, so there's enough in the pot for everybody so we all can, can, can be successful. But college was a little different for me. I had to find my niche, mm -hmm. um, find my core group of people right, again. Right. Um, I'm learning me mm -hmm. and who I am and what I really want to do. Um, for me, I found that love in, in a sorority, you know, with a close-knit group of women awesome. um, that kind of surrounded me. Um, my struggle probably more during those formative years was good. Mm -hmm. My struggle probably came more as an adult. Mm, let's talk about that. Probably came more as an adult. And I, I've shared with my students at one point in a small setting that I want them to learn to be okay with who they are now. That's so good. Versus 40-ish. Mm. I want them to love who they are, be unapologetic about who they are. Mm -hmm. If you're smart, you know, if you're talented, if you're brilliant, I want you to embrace that. If you look on our social media, we post a motivational quote every Monday. Mm -hmm. And the, the quote yesterday was something about being okay with your dopeness. That's so good. Being okay with being great. Yeah. You know, be okay with that. Because I don't want them to to struggle with that well into their 40s. Right. I want them to really be okay with that. Be okay with everyone not liking you. Yeah. Be okay with sticking to the path that you know you're supposed to be on, even if you find yourself lonely sometimes. Right. right. When you're smart, be okay with being smart. When you when you're driven and you want to be successful, don't shy away from that. It is okay to want to be successful. Correct. As long as you're not stepping over people, you're not being malicious and doing right. things, you know, underhanded to get there. It's okay with that. I didn't get that. I didn't Man. get that until the last probably seven years. You know, that was too long to go that far right. to not get that. I understand it. And so I really want them to be okay. We, we do a lot with mindset and mm. teaching them to love themselves and be positive and be okay. I want them to be okay with that. I want them to be okay with that. My young girls... We don't have to compete for everything. Right. You know, right. everything doesn't have to turn into a comp competition where you have to bring the next person down. Right. You know, so I, I just really want them to get that and um, and just learn to, to love who you are. I love Good, that. bad, indifferent, doesn't matter. Yeah. Everything about us is what makes us. Yeah. <laughs> every part of it. Every part the good, of the bad, it. and the ugly. Every, every ugly. experience. <laughs> it's every what experience makes us. Every experience makes us. And for me... I now see how those dots were connected mm -hmm. to bring me to this space. Mm -hmm. And now I understand why he closed a door. I closed several doors, but opened others. Correct. You know, because it all landed me. This is where I'm supposed to be in this moment at this time. So it all makes sense now. You know, so. That's really good. And I hope you guys are like hearing there's a theme that I'm hearing as Dr. Coltrane is speaking. Um, she started this in the very first question. And, and the, that theme is... Being okay with knowing that where you are now is where you're supposed to be. Yeah. Like knowing that every mark or distinction of your life yeah. is what it was supposed to be. Supposed like to be. like being okay in that space and taking ownership yeah. of that space. And I, I love what she said because we have, you know, a lot of adults watching. And, and some people, you know, may not be ready to talk about that or, or may be ready to admit it. But many of us, I can attest to that, being an adult and and realizing, wait a minute, I've got to really find my way and find yeah. find my niche because yeah. for so long, this is was my behavior pattern. This was my circle, yeah. and this circle kind of has me going in a circle. <laughs> in a circle, right? <laughs> so I've got to find a different route yeah. here. So it's it's amazing that you share that, and I think many adults struggle yeah. with that yeah. still to this day, and it's okay. And I'm yeah. so glad because yeah. one of the things that I love about my show is that it's always 
People come on and transparency just begins to yeah, flood out. Yeah. And I love that because people need to hear truth. Yeah. Um, they need to see that, you know, every part of the process, even though you have this amazing accolade <laughs> that we've talked about yeah. being, you know, the SC middle level principal yeah. of the year. There are still, you know, times in your adulthood at, yeah. that got you to this point yeah. where you had to reconcile yeah. with, okay, where's Robin going? Yeah. And what does Robin want? want? Yeah. Despite yeah. what everybody else yes. is saying, all of this other stuff, what does Robin, or what is Robin supposed to be doing? And I think and, that's, we all have to answer yes. that question. And if I'm supposed to be doing this, be okay with, I want to do this well. Right. I want to do right. it well. And I want to do it the way it's supposed to be done. The way he is, he is calling me to do it. Absolutely. You know, so once I've kind of, and it's kind of like, you ever went to wipe something off and you didn't get all of it? Right. And so every now and then, it may be a little residue left mm -hmm. behind from mm -hmm. it. But just trying to know to continue to walk. That's so walk good. In, walk in your That's calling. So Not good. somebody else's calling, Robin. But yeah. walk in your calling. What so is it good. that you are supposed to be doing? And everything else seems to fall into place. I love it. It will fall into place. So I love it. I love that. Yeah. You know, I love that. Because it's so real. Like, this walk... Um, yeah. there are days, like she said, you're going to try to wipe it away and there's still going to be some residue. <laughs> and guess what? Take another little wipe, wipe the rest of it <laughs> away. Oh, I love that because that's life. Yeah. You know, we don't end up in that perfect spot, um, at one time. Yeah. It's a process that leads us there. And for those who are aspir aspiring to be administrators, I just want to say this is hard work. Amen. But it's hard work. Yeah. And so when it's, when it's what you're supposed to do. Um, there'll be days, but when, when you get up every morning with that refreshed kind of feeling that, yes, this is what I'm supposed to do. Just make sure that this is what you're called to do. Yeah. Um, that's and good. that you're supposed to be in leadership and that you're leading by example and that, um, that you're truly called to it. That's so good. A lot of people want to go into administration. And so we need great administrators who are called to do this work. We need them. I, I totally agree with that, and I second that. Make yeah. sure that you are called to it because you are leading a community. Yes. As a school administrator, um, and I'm and I'm gonna uh, we're gonna end with with a combination of questions here, okay. right? Okay. So we're gonna talk about like in what ways because this is important. It's important for South Carolina. It's important for our nation and our world. Um, and somebody says hard work is supposed to be hard work. That's true. <laughs> yes. Now, you know, because this heart is, it, listen, it's doing a mighty work. It is. Keeping us alive. It That's is. hard work. It is. So it is definitely, I agree with that. Um, so South Carolina last year, when I was working on my research, the beginning of the school year, August, people are getting ready to go back to school. Kids are ready to come back. Administrators, principals, everybody's ready. Yes. But we had at least five to seven hundred educator vacancies yes. in the state of South Carolina yeah. in August of 2019. Mm -hmm. So you talked about your team earlier mm -hmm. and you talked about the amazing work that they do in the, the various um, backgrounds of your educators. Yes. What are you all doing here at WA Pair to retain teachers and to make them feel like the work that they're doing is valuable enough for them to stay? So one of the things that I'm particularly interested in, I had the opportunity to be in a program that no longer exists at the State Department. It was called the South Carolina um, School Turnaround Program. I've had the opportunity to spend a week at Harvard in school turnaround. And so that's kind of been an interest of mine. And while Perry is not a turnaround school, the strategies that work for turnaround work here. Awesome. And so put a lot of those strategies into place. You have to celebrate your people. That's you so have good. to appreciate your people. You can't pay them what you know they're worth. Right. But you can value them. Mm -hmm. And so I, I like to think that I do that pretty well That's in terms of showing people how much I appreciate them, how much I value them. Um, it's nothing for me. You, you're all that in a bag of chips. Yeah. You know, it's crunch time. And motivating people, I think you have to set a a time a, a you have to set a tone in your building. Oh yes, you have to have a climate and culture in your building. People feel it when they walk in. People know when it's genuine. They can tell when it's from the heart. Absolutely. So I think that's the first thing. Okay. Um, our turnaround here has been low. It was it's been low since I've been here. That's good. And I think probably before me. Um, 
we we may get three, four, maybe, you know, who may leave, who want to do other things. Okay. They're aspiring to do other things. Okay. Like I'm all for people going higher. Absolutely. You know, going higher. Like this, this, do your time here, do it well. And when that door opens for you, Absolutely. you know, I say go through it. But we do have a small retention bonus that we that was in place this year. Okay. But I don't even think that was what was holding people right. here. Right. I think when you work here, you have to love this type of work. Man. Working in a high poverty school, um, you seeing yourself in the faces of the kids. Yeah. And so I think that helps. But I think setting that climate and culture of welcoming and warm and more than anything else. Staff want to feel supported. That's good. They That's want key. to feel supported. Absolutely. They want to know you have their back. They want to know that you can provide them with their resources. Some level of autonomy. There's going to be some oversight. Right. But some level of level of autonomy to be able to go into their rooms, to be able to teach. Absolutely. Creating this experience where we can risk take. Yes. We can do some risk taking. Yeah. You know, where we can do some things. And I think if you can set up that type of atmosphere, there'll be some people who leave, but for the most part, your people will, will kind of stay with you. Okay. And if you're a leader that they ne- not necessarily like, but respect. That's so at good. The end of the day, That's so we want to make sure that, there, that there's a level of respect there. Yeah. I think um, they will do the work for you. They will do the work for you. They will come and they'll be supportive, even during the times when you make hard decisions that Absolutely. they don't necessarily like. Absolutely. You know, but they know that, you know what, there's a level of accountability. Absolutely. But there is a, there are issues with teacher retention across the state, yeah. across America, yeah. actually. And so people are leaving, uh, unfortunately, they're leaving the education system. Yeah. And sometimes you hear it because of the pay. Right. You know, sometimes you hear it because of the lack of support. Right. Because we're losing teachers in those first first um, first three years, years. Um, yeah, yeah, first three mm-hmm. years, we're losing them, yeah. and so we've got to look at the things that we can do mm-hmm. um, to put in place. I know USC has the Carolina TIP program mm-hmm. where they're working to try to make sure that we retain those teachers Absolutely. in the first three years. But I think it's crucial to to have support. Teachers want to feel supported. I think that's a a key word. There is is support, and yeah. and and like I said, we we talked earlier. You know, of course. The dollar, um, it's, a, it's a different discussion for a different day. But I wanted to talk more about what happens in yes. the actual school yeah. um, and what we can do. Yes. You know, um, we, we'll continue to advocate for, you know, greater pay for educators, yes. of course. Um, but for the day-to-day work that it happens in the school, I wanted Dr. Coltrane to share, like, yeah. specifically as a school building principal, yes. what they were doing here at WA period. And, and that support, I think, is, is a major word because... Because um, even when it comes to classroom management, if that's an issue that a teacher has, if a teacher feels like that he or she has support, yeah. I think that also helps to create that foundation where, you know, even though it's tough some days, yeah. I'm able to stay because I, I know that even if I can't get it under control, yeah. I have a Dr. Coltrane that yeah. I can go to yeah. and share with her what my strengths and weaknesses are. And she's going to give me the support, whether it's through literature, whether it's yeah. through actual training opportunities, yeah. whether it's through, but you're going to give that yeah. support. So we created this, um, maybe two, three years ago, we created this kind of new employee. We didn't even call it new teacher new employee that's okay. even our classified staff oh wow where they meet quarterly we even had a um, classroom management one of my assistant principals he developed this classroom management kind of series okay um that was really really good for our international teachers awesome and then some of our teachers who from, from the u.s um just to make sure ask any questions go in and observe give some feedback but just really, nothing beats support. That I'm telling nothing you, it's, beats it's, support. it's you cannot get away from it. Um, I, 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 I think that's so important because although, again, because I, I don't you know, ever want anything to be kind of misinterpreted or misunderstood, I believe that advocating for the teacher pay is, yes. is prime, it's important. But 
when it happens, because I believe that we, you know, we're going to make enough yes, noise to, they're going to make some changes. We, we still need to know what we're doing while we're in the class. Yes. And I think that's if, if we work from the ground up, yeah. while that fight is being fought, we still have to work and reshape our foundation. Yes, we do. So once we are getting paid, you know, what we are well worth, then we're able to then perform our jobs yes. to where it's effective for the students, yeah. for the families and the communities that we serve. Yeah. Because I look at it this way, I mean, it's okay. If I pay a teacher starting off forty five thousand, but they still, you know, or fifty thousand, and they still come in and they're not able to really function in the classroom, I mean, I'm really paying them, but are they really able to perform the yeah. work? Yeah. So again, uh, again, I'm not saying that. I, I believe again, that's a great starting salary coming out of college, forty five, fifty thousand dollars to teach. Um, but we want you to know what you're doing, yeah. and um, and that support is 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 prime, and that's what helps teachers. I, I remember coming in to education yeah. for the first time and this was in the early 2000s and that was something that I really felt yeah. you know it was a small rural school I'm born well district 19 yeah. um, Blackville Hilda High School go Hawks <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I love that area one it was my first assignment yeah. and um, it was my it was it gave me an opportunity to grow and understand really what the teaching profession yeah. was really all about and that's where I learned the hard work yeah that's where I learned that this is not mm-hmm. just about education um, it's not even about the amount that you get paid at yeah. the end of the day it's really about you feeling like you your call to help move a yeah. generation forward. Yeah. This is about moving people forward. So I'm so glad Thank that you. the key things that are happening here at WA Perry are keeping, you know, this school moving forward, yes. is serving the community. Yes. Um, and with that question as far as supporting the teachers, like how um, how have you garnered trust from parents and the community members around the WA Perry community? You know, I think it's hard. I think in year one you're coming in and you're trying to learn and you're trying to find your footing um, and if I can be honest, I think being here and showing them that I'm, that I'm committed. Okay. Um, in those first two years, um, uh, it was really, really important for me to, to let my kids see mm. that I'm, I was for them. That's so good. And so that meant, I told someone, I think in year, in the first two years, I probably never missed an event. Wow. That was here at school. A basketball game, a wow. football game. That's major. Very rarely did I miss anything in year one and two. Wow. Tried to hit now. Tried to hit community meetings. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a task force. We have a partnership breakfast now where uh, we bring partners in. Okay. Um, so it was a lot of work. I, I think in letting them see and value the mission that we were doing here. That's good. The direction that we were taking the school in. That I was committed to being here. That's awesome. You know, she she's not someone that's just coming in and, okay, she's going to be gone next year. But being committed to being here and really moving that school forward. That's and awesome. so I think, it, I told somebody, I felt like I was online until after my first year. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you like, who, who uh, pledged, pledge, then you know what being online is all about. <laughs> I felt like I was pledging my first year. And so... Being visible, just being out, being in the hallways, being in the cafeteria, letting the kids see me and know, not entitled that I was the principal, but in my action and my That's deeds so that good. I was the principal. You know, so good. Um, letting my teachers know that you can have a conversation with me. You can stop me in the hall. My door is open. Right. My secretary now, she said, she said, it's your fault. <laughs> you created this open door policy and it's literally open. Right. And she says it's literally open to when you're trying to get some work done. No, nope, you created that open door. <laughs> but just having that policy and working with the community, um, communicating a lot. That's so You key. know, sending out a lot of correspondence, uh, that weekly email of what's happening at WA Perry. Right. You know, keeping them informed of things that are happening that's going on here at WA Perry. I would say branding Perry, you know, mm, that's good. it was important. That's I really remember good. sometimes somebody said, she, they just bragging over there. They just bragging. And I said, well, it ain't bragging if it's the truth. Right. <laughs> you know, but telling the good story, the good news of the things that were yeah. happening here at Perry, it was important for us to, to get that out to the community. Yeah. Yeah. Get that, you know, out. Um, to bring in business partners and people into the school like it's like all of that has worked hand in hand for us. That's good. And so that was very important to me. Um 
having some level of transparency, doing some book studies on culture, on climate. Okay. Um, we did, last year, we did The Power of a Positive Team by John Gordon. Oh, wow. And we made it fun, you know. Um, we made it, we did it with March Madness. Okay. So everybody was divided into a team. Gotcha. In the East and the West and, <laughs> you know, compete. And we did it in a fun way, but it was still a way for us to talk about teamwork. That's good. That's and, really you know, good. making sure that we're all working towards the same thing. You know, even in hard times when the situations are hard, right. let's remember what we're working for. We're working for kids. That's it. And we're working to move kids. That's awesome. You know, so. Yeah. That's that's actually, that's inspiring. Um, I know if you're watching, um, I, Lowell, uh, Jane hey, says, the, uh, gift of presence. I love that. <laughs> Visibility is key. Um, Chanel says, there was, there was something else someone said that they work with. Uh, Harry, um, LaShonda said, I hosted a teen talk with the Department of Community Health Improvement of Prisma at W.A. Perry. Um, she said, the staff and security are fantastic and welcoming to community leaders and mentoring their students. Thank so that's you. awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that um, so much, LaShonda. Appreciate that. Um, and, again, and again, that speaks to the essence yeah. of, of what's happening here at W.A. Perry. And for those that aren't familiar with W.A. Perry, because I know some people who are they, that are watching who live in Columbia, but not yeah. necessarily are from Columbia and may not be familiar with like what what complex what area it, yeah. and, and correct me if I'm wrong but it is in the C A Johnson co is. complex it's, area mm -hmm. so it's C A Johnson it's cluster cluster yes the Edgewood T S Martin right yes and so it's been an area um, you know of, of a, a little bit of concern in yes. education mm -hmm. um, and but. Uh, Robin is here and she's doing what she's been called to do and what God put her here to do and I mean there are amazing results happening thank here you. so I'm super excited thank you, thank you so much for thank sharing you. thank you for sharing your heart thank you um, with me with the audience on tonight thank you all so much for watching thank you for the questions and the comments I think there were some other people here oh Lord they went away but it's okay we saw you <laughs> we did see you and uh, we'll make sure that uh, uh, we respond, you know, I know Dr. Coltrane, she don't mind. She'll go in and respond yeah. if there's a question specifically, um, you know, geared towards W. Perry mm -hmm. or for her. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I'm super excited. Thank Again, you, you. I was able to sit down with the SC Middle <laughs> Level Principal of the Year. Thank you. Thank Give you her God. kudos for that. Um, amazing, God. amazing um, accolade here. And um, I couldn't think of a better person. I know several principals, several middle school principals, and I know she is deserving because she puts her heart into Thank everything you. that she does Thank in you. education. Um, I'm all about celebrating as we go out. Hadn't had a chance to sit down and talk to her, but definitely want to give, I mean, we love all educators and we want to celebrate, especially our African-American females. So yes. shout out over there to Dr. Sabrina Suber over in Richland too. Yes. She won. She won. Yeah, yes. she just won the South Carolina, I believe it's uh, administrator, administrator for, for the year. Yeah. For, for, and she's in high school. Yeah, for some, it's another organization. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, awesome, awesome job. Super. Awesome. Our yeah. our black women are out here making magic, man. <laughs> we're out here helping children. We are out here helping our communities. And we're moving our nation forward by helping the people that we've been given. And so Dr. Coltrane is, for one, doing an amazing job here at W.A. Perry. If you're a community leader and you are watching, come and check out oh, what come. they're doing here at W.A. Perry. I mean, like she said, they welcome community oh, members. Yes. Come and see what these children would love love to see you yes. um, as she shared earlier they are often um, exposing their children to several spaces yes. several places and several people come on over here and let those children see you yes. and see who you are and what you're doing in the community they would love to see your smiling faces um, uh, Dr. Coltrane do you have any words for our audience before we close out I just thank you and I look forward to serving the state of South Carolina South Carolina middle level principal of the year as always I ask for your fervent prayers for the work that we do, not just for myself, but for all educators. Um, it's hard work. Yes. It's hard work. But we ask that you keep us in your prayers. You keep our babies in, in, in your prayers, that they're safe and, um, and that they're loved and that they're learning and they're growing to be able to take our places one day. Absolutely. So thank you so much. We appreciate it. And if you have time, if you only got an hour a week, an hour a month, please consider volunteering with a school, dedicating some time. Um, we have to reach back and help out yeah. our kids. So please give that. Um, I always tell people, your money is fine and money and donations are good, but I need that human capital. 
So if you're able to volunteer and give some time, if not to WA Perry, to any school, absolutely. trust me, they'll be most, most appreciative of it. Thank you so much Thank for you. sharing that. That was a good benediction. I love it. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Keep us in prayer, of course, our uh, education system overall. Yes. Thank you so much again, Dr. Thank Coltrane. You. And thank you all for watching. We appreciate your views and also your presence and questions. Thank you again. Thank you. This has been thank Dr. You. D uh, with Unlimited Edition Live. Make sure if you want to continue to follow Dr. Coltrane, you can find her on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter yes. at uh, Robin L. Coltrane or Dr. Robin L. Coltrane. Um, of course, you can find me at dr d unlimited facebook instagram and twitter and um we'll look forward to seeing you guys next time thank, thank you. you so much Bye. for hanging with us thank good night you.